nah, just want to give you a, a show of how the uh, cucumbers and I'm growing, uh, what am I growing in here? I'm growing a potato cucumber, little potato they call it. I'm growing Armenian striped. I don't think I'm growing a regular Armenian this year. I'm growing the Armenian striped. And then I'm growing, I think, the green apple. And I'm, I, I, one of these plants is a sucker. Or a volunteer, not a sucker. One, this big one up here. You see this one that's coming up and over. That one's a, a lemon. Uh, is that what they call a lemon? It's those little round ones with the stripes on it. And they're yellow. Um, a lemon, a lemon cucumber. Um, that, that, those things grow like weeds here. Then once they establish themselves, it's unbelievable. And the, and the amount of cucumbers that are going to come off that thing is just absolutely ridiculous. I don't particularly care too much for the lemon cucumber. Um, I, I guess if you eat them when they're young before they get, you know, kind of hard like. And there's more seed. There's not as much flesh. The whole inside of it is is like almost all seed. The flesh wall thickness is maybe a half inch thick, and you know. And then if you peel the skin off, you really left with not much, you know. And I'm not gonna eat the seeds part. If you eat it young, maybe you could eat it to eat the seeds, but um, whatever, you know. There were so many uh, uh, lemon cucumbers growing on that vine last year. They were just falling off the thing like apples off a tree. I mean, there were literally dozens upon dozens of them in there and I just I wasn't even picking them after a while I just gave up on them I figured oh, I'll pick them when I'm ready to eat them I just you know I didn't really care for them too much but I mean I was eating them but you know I come out and I forage so I don't like to necessarily come out here uh, grab all my food bring it inside and prepare it I like to come out and just like pick and eat off the plants fresh and there's reasons why I do that. It's not just because I like to forage. It's There's actual reasons um, why I actually do that. And there's some science behind it and everything. And maybe we'll get into that another time. And I'll, I'll get into some of that understanding of that stuff. But, um, yeah, this is my cucumbers. Uh, there might be a melon in here, too. That was another one that kind of got away on me. Uh, one of those uh, cantaloupe melons, a seed. Uh, may have gotten away. I'm not sure. I'm not totally sure. We'll see what comes out of this thing. Uh, you can see here's the inside of it. It's not too blighty yet. It's starting to get some bad leaves. I do, I do pick them. You can see I got a cucumber already. So for me, that's kind of early. Uh, we shouldn't be seeing cucumbers for at least another two weeks. You should. It's going to take a little bit. There was really no bees this year. I didn't see any bumblebees. I didn't see any... Um, Usually my greenhouse is filled with bumblebees <coughs> and and other uh, pollinating insects. This year I didn't see any bumblebees, so I'm not sure what's going on. I hope it, I hope things are okay in the environment, but no bumblebees this year. Just a couple, a few here and there, you know. Seeing a couple in the season up on my deck and a couple out here, and that was really it. I, I don't know what to do to attract them in here. I leave all the doors open. And this place usually gets filled with bumblebees. They come in like crazy. So, um, I'm not sure. So hopefully I can get some fruit out of this thing this year because these need to be pollinated and there's only so much I can do. Uh, back here, that little leaf you're looking at there, uh, that kind of got overgrown. <laughs> that is the Mexican sour gherkin. Um, it's grown in a little pot or a little bag, gorilla bag. I call it gorilla farming bags. You just take bags, roll them back, fill them with soil, and do your deal. Um, it's growing in that, so I may end up having to bring, bring that in for the winter. I can't really move it out of here. Obviously, you can pretty much see it. I'm just kind of filled in at this point. I should have pulled it out earlier, but I didn't. And... Um, uh, that's life, right? I think I'm going to pick that cucumber, guys. I'm going to pick this one right now. I'm going to eat it. You, you wait till these things get a little too big. And, um, they're, you just really don't enjoy eating them. Um, the seeds get, the skins get tough. I, I never get sour cucumbers, like bitter cucumbers. I never get those. Now, what did I just pick? It was one of these. I believe, oh my god. Look, see this cucumbers? down there you can kind of see them they're starting to go out they're getting pollinated a little bit but i hope the bees start coming around here you know 
Let's take a bite out of this thing. Mmm. Sorry for the lip flapping, guys. You know, your camera picks that out. I should edit that out, but... Mmm. I'm trying to give you the effect that that I'm getting when I eat the cucumber. So you, when you eat it, you kind of... You got to know how to get your, you got to know how to make your, 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 you know, activate all the taste buds on your tongue. And sometimes you have to flap your lips a little bit, you know, don't do it in front of people. But I mean, you know, if you're in your greenhouse and you're foraging in the woods or something, don't worry about it. Nobody's watching you flap your lips. You got to, you got to, uh, you got to learn how to train your taste buds to taste for something that can be potentially poisonous. And I have uh, eaten something that was not necessarily poisonous but uh, close to it and I knew it because I could I trained myself to be able to taste for uh, alkaloids and uh, you know just just you can't really say oxalic acid you, you, you can tell if you're eating something with a high in oxalic acid but um, it's really things with alkaloids you got to learn to train your taste buds to taste for it taste that and sometimes you're eating stuff and um, you don't know what's in there and you may eat a little too much of it a little bit might not do anything but too much of it will make you sick or it could do other internal long-term damages so you got to learn to train your taste buds and sometimes you got to flap your lips just don't do it in front of people i know i shouldn't be doing it on camera but i want you people to start doing that and learn to learn how to use your sinuses and your nasals in conjunction with your taste buds to learn how to train them to start tasting for things I, maybe I'll do a video on that. You know how to how to forage, how to eat wild foods. A lot of times I go hiking in the woods, and I'll just I don't bring any food with me. I'll just eat whatever I can find, and I just eat all day. I go out and I eat and I eat and I eat like a cow and a, a, a cow grazing in a field. You know, just everything I can eat, even grass. You know, and I try things. But anyway, I'm just a this is an update on this uh, cucumber conglomeration. Uh, this is just the beginning. This thing gets massive. Now, I'm hoping this thing will fully grow itself out <laughs> like it did in years past and not get hit with the uh, gray mold because once that gray mold gets everything, it just wipes it out. So, But that's just a quick look at this. And, um, you know, you can see this thing is just literally... <laughs> It's going everywhere. This thing, these are going to eventually climb up to that that beam right there, and then I'm going to string it across. It just whole the whole top of this greenhouse gets covered with uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, these vines and all these fruits hang below it. it. Gets filled with bees and stuff. It's totally awesome. I'm hoping I can get it this year before the white mold kicks in. Um, but if we, we if we don't, I'm going to show you the results of what happens anyway, regardless. Um, there's really not much I can do about the way it, it grows in here. This, this environment created itself. Some tomato plants do okay, like the ones on this side of the greenhouse seem to do okay. They're not real big. They don't get real heavily densed. Same thing on the other side. But then when you come into a certain area like the center part of the greenhouse, I literally cannot control it. I'm under the impression it has to do because it's sitting directly on the ground. It's grounded to the earth. And when things are grounded to the earth, this is the result of being grounded to the earth. Now, I mean, seriously, look how healthy these tomato plants are. I mean, these are the healthiest. I don't even, I'm not even fertilizing these or nothing. There's wood chips and good soil and all, but I'm not fertilizing them. I, I might give them a little Epsom salt once in a while if I can squeeze in there. <laughs> But I mean, these tomatoes are just, I mean, like this is a volunteer. Look at this, look at the, look at the absolute color, perfect color on this thing. I mean, this thing is so healthy, it's ridiculous. I know I bent that over because it's leaning into my naranjellos, but the, the plants are just, I mean, these plants are, I mean, I'm five foot eight, I'm almost six feet. And yeah, there's like maybe eight inches of pot over there. So these are all, most of these, like this one over here in the back. This thing's over my head. <laughs> All right, <laughs> that thing's over my head already. So, you know, six they're six foot plants, five six foot already. Um, these normally get go all the way to the top. 
the, from the floor to the top over here is about eight and a half feet. From the floor to the top over there by the door is about 10 feet to the ridge. You see that's the ridge on top. So that's about 10 feet. These plants usually grow, they usually reach all the way to the top. They hit the thing and then they start folding over. If they don't collapse earlier, if I can't get in here to tie all these and stake all these things up, they get to around eight, eight and a half feet tall and then they just fall over and collapse. And that is when the disasters begin. Because at that point, you're done. It, it the mold it just accelerates the the, the um it just accelerates the, the, the decline of the entire greenhouse ecosystem that's going in here. So I, I have to make sure that these plants can stay supported upwards and not collapse. Because it, they, once they get tomatoes on it, the weight is just, you know, 5, 10 pounds in weight hanging on that thing. It, it, even with stakes, it, it, I've had tomato cages fall because they've had 2 or 3 pound, you know, like 3 or 4, 2, 3 pound tomatoes on it. And just collapse my tomato cages, fold them like like they were tin, like like they were uh, lead wire or something. Just ridiculous. Um, I'll show you as the time goes on. I'll show you how how this greenhouse looks. Maybe I'll even attach a vi a uh, image right here somewhere in here. And I'll point to it up here or down here or something like that. And um, you click on that link, and and that'll either bring you to the image or maybe I'll just put the image right in here. I don't know. I don't know. Here's more volunteers that just come up. I, I really have no control of these. I could yank it out. I think that's a melon down there. Could be a cucumber. I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, there's that, That's definitely a cucumber, but this one's a melon. And they, these things just, you know, you got to just step around them. That's all right. Uh, the wood chips are down on the floor. That keeps all the... Uh, you know, blighty things from getting crazy. But anyways, enough of my rambling and lip flapping. Uh, that's it right there, though. That's going to be the center. That thing grows uh, unbelievable. Uh, again, what kind of uh, cucumbers am I growing? I got to look it up, see if, what I actually planted. But I, like I say, there's the um, Armenian stripe, the uh, little apple or little potato. I dig the green apple. I do have miniature white growing. Uh, I think I got a regular either straight. That's what this is. This one's either a straight eight or a national pickling uh, uh, pickle. This is either one or the other. Um, I don't know. I've got like maybe eight or nine varieties growing. So we'll see what comes out of it. So anyways, that is just a quick look at the cucumber um post i don't know what to call this thing the cucumber deal all right enjoy peace